All right, guys, the time has finally come. We're talking about Rome Research. Now, if you don't know, Rome is a note-taking service. It's an, a web app that lives online exclusively right now, and it lets you take notes. It lets you take research notes specifically. And so a lot of the videos that I see about this are really heady. They're really up in the clouds about like Zettelkasten and talking about neurons in your brain and how Rome replicates how ideas form and lets you create these connections between disparate ideas. And that's great. And I'm glad that those videos exist. And I think that they do a, a good service because Rome definitely has a really high ceiling for how complicated it can get, how much it can do for you. But at the end of the day, this is a $15 a month note-taking app. And from my perspective and kind of the focus of this channel, I really want to know how does that justify itself? <laughs> like with options like Notion out there, Apple Notes on your iPhone, like Google Keep, like there's tons of note-taking apps on, out there. There's no shortage of apps that do a really good job of taking notes. So why are you going to use this one that's so much more expensive than the other options? So. Today, we're going to look at the pricing, we're going to look at the basics of the app, and I'm going to touch on some of the advanced features. I'd really like to do a follow-up video on some of the advanced stuff that Rome does, just because there's too much to do all in one um, single video. And then I'll tell you whether I decided to start paying for that after the free trial. I'll tell you right now, my intention at the start of this was to not do that. I wanted to just get in, try it out, make a video that you're watching right now <laughs> about it, and then move on. I'll let you know what I actually decided to do at the end of the video. Um, we'll let that be a little tease. But that's it, let's uh, jump in. Let's talk about pricing right up front because this is going to turn a lot of people off right away and that's fine. Rome is $15 per month. You can pay for a year at a time or five years at a time and save some money, but no matter how you shake it, this is gonna be a lot more expensive than most of the note takers that you're probably thinking of. When we have things like Apple Notes, Google Keep, Notion out there that are completely free and sync between your devices and everything, and then you have things like Ulysses or Bear or all these other note takers, as far as I'm concerned, and from what I've seen, this is basically the most expensive note taker you can get. So it has to be good. And so how does Rome earn its keep? Let's, uh, let's take a look and see if it does. So what does Rome actually do? When you get right down to it, Rome lets you create a lot of bulleted lists. That's really it. And so you can use this to take notes. You can't really do a ton of formatting. You can't do numbered lists, for example. You can't do uh, like full on tables or the sorts of stuff that Notion allows you to do with like crazy formatting and everything. But it lets you take these bolded lists of notes and you can use those for quite a few things. A use case for me is at work, I use it for meetings. I have a lot of meetings. I have more meetings than I ever wish I did. And I use this to take notes during them. So when a meeting starts, I just type in meeting. And that means everything underneath this bullet point is part of that meeting. I'll usually put the name of the meeting on the first line as well so I can kind of see what meeting this was. As the meeting progresses, I take whatever notes I'd like to have for later, just like I would for any other note taking app. And I also take random notes throughout the day and throw them in the daily note as well. So I really live inside this daily note that it presents to you every day. Now you might have noticed I put meeting inside of brackets there. Why did I do that? This gets to the core feature of Rome, bidirectional linking. Everything you put in brackets like this gets a page created for it so you can visit that page at any time. This page will have all the times you created this link. So for my meeting use case, I can either search for meeting up at the top, or I can click on any instance of this link inside any note. Then I'll see all my meeting notes in one place. What's cool and what you'll see down here is that there are also unlinked references, and that's where Rome gets even more powerful. Unlinked references are times when I used a term that I have a page for, but didn't put it in a link. I didn't put it in brackets. This is what enables Rome to connect notes and ideas even if you didn't intentionally link them yourself. This means you don't have to spend all day putting every keyword into brackets. Rome links them no matter what. Now putting brackets around a word or a phrase turns in, into a page, but you can also create page is manually by typing in the name of what you want it to be in the search box up top. So let's make a page called YouTube. Now I can write whatever I want here. It's just like my daily note, it's a bolded list, but it's a separate thing. So I can put my plans for YouTube, I can put other things there, I can put notes, I can put like descriptions or stock uh, text that I wanna put at the bottom of every show description or something, something like that. And then I can also have linked references. So anything else that I write where I put use the word YouTube, it'll get linked here as well. 
But let's not get theoretical. Let's use an actual page I'm using, and I'm going to use one I made called Video Script, which is what I'm reading from right now. You can see the script is all here, and then at the bottom we have other notes where I referenced the script. This is a good example of how you can have content like notes for a specific thing, or a script in this case, and then have linked notes as well. It's, it's pretty clever. You can favorite any page you've created, and I highly suggest favoriting a few right away. I have my to-do page, custom CSS, uh, the script and outline for this video favorited in my instance, and in my work instance, which I'm not going to show you directly, is uh, I have meeting notes there and a few other major product names in my work database. These let me be one click away from seeing any of these at any time. Moving past the linking, the bi-directional linking, and unreferenced links and everything, <laughs> which is a big part of Rome and a big thing that people love about it, um, there's a few other things you should know just as part of the basics. First, you can format your notes with Markdown. It's actually the only way to format things. So if you already know Markdown, you'll be right at home. If you don't, then you'll want a quick refresher on how to do it. Um, the app will do some things. If you do like Command B to bold text, it'll bold it. It'll just put the asterisks around and everything. So it does that, which is nice. Second, there is task creation. So I don't use Roam for my tasks usually. I use Things 3 for that. But sometimes a meeting will prompt a to-do item for me, and I don't want to switch over to my to-do app. I just want to do it in my notes, and then like I'll go through my notes at the end and actually make the tasks for my task manager um, at the end. And so to do these, I hit Command-Enter, and this turns whatever line you're on into a to-do. And it, there's a checkbox you can check when you're done with it. These don't have due dates or notifications or anything, so if you make one and then you forget about it, <laughs> you'll just never do it. That's why I put my to-do item in the sidebar as one of my favorited items so that I can access whatever I haven't done yet at any point. And you can also, if you want to give it a due date, you can actually just type the name of the date, which is exactly how it's going to show. So this would be August 15th, 2020, for example. You want to make that as part of that item so that once that day comes along, it'll show up as a linked reference to that date. And so you can already see how this is getting a little complicated and hard to explain, but that's kind of how Rome works. Everything is referencing something else. And the third and fourth things, uh, third, you can drag images into your notes. So you can just drag them from your desktop into a note, it'll upload and then display in line. You can also use links to images hosted elsewhere. So it's just a markdown link so you can link to anywhere else. And fourth, there is a lot of functionality hidden behind the slash autocomplete function. So when a note, just type the forward slash and you'll get a whole bunch of options for things to add to your notes, like timers, like the current uh, timestamp, all sorts of things. So those are the basics and hopefully by now you have a good idea whether Roam is gonna work for you or not. And I'm not gonna get super deep into the advanced stuff, but there are a few more slightly advanced things that you may wanna know about that are gonna help you make your decision whether you even wanna give this a free trial or not. We've been talking about looking at one note at a time so far, and while that's often useful, sometimes it's helpful to see two at once. This is where the sidebar comes into play. You can just shift click on any link and it'll open that in the sidebar. It's a little smaller, it's grayed out, but it's also editable, so you can do anything you would normally do there at the same time. For example, I used this when I was writing the script, as I could have the outline open next to the script to make sure I was staying on track with what I wanted to talk about. I've also used it to show last week's meeting notes while I'm taking this week's notes. It's frequently really useful to have the stuff we talked about last time up on the screen so I can reference them at any point if someone was like, what did we decide last time? <laughs> those moments seem to happen a lot, so those are really good to have. And then there's the graph, and I know a lot of people use Roam specifically for this feature. This takes all of the linked and unlinked notes you've taken and visually shows how they all relate to one another. I frankly don't have a lot to say about this because I don't use it at all for my use case. The idea is that you can use it to make connections between ideas that you maybe didn't even realize existed. So for my work-based notes, I haven't really found any revelations with this, but I know people who use it for things like book notes and have found themes between different topics that make them think about the world differently. So for example, maybe you read a book about uh, religion and then another book about chemistry. You may see a connection between these two ideas in your graph, look into them and see how these seemingly disparate things are actually similar. I can only think of theoretical examples, and I feel like in every video it's always theoretical examples, but I know people find these, so I'm not going to discount it, it's just not a thing that I have gotten use out of. There's also custom CSS, so Rome doesn't look amazing by default. It looks fine, and it certainly looks better than the spring when I initially used it for a couple days. 
but there are tons of custom CSS themes out there for Rome. Uh, the community has made quite a few of them. And so here's how you make one work once you find one. Um, you just need to make a new note called exactly Rome slash CSS. You type the name you want to give the style sheet on the first line of the uh, that page. You go to the next line and type in three tick marks to create a code block. You paste in the CSS you want to use. And then finally, you need to change the format of the code block to CSS, and then you're done. You should see the change instantly. Some of the things people have done with these themes is really impressive. I personally like the Leyendecker. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but the Leyendecker theme, uh, there's tons of other ones out there, and there's even a Chrome extension to apply them even easier. So you can just go out there and get crazy. There's a ton more to talk about with Rome research. As I get to the end of this video, I'm, it's really hitting me how much I wasn't able to talk about today, but I didn't want this video to be 50 minutes long and, <laughs> and just filled with just weird ideas about how you can take notes and like the, the concept of notes in the first place and all that, all that stuff that I talked about in the intro that I didn't really want to get into. I'm trying not to get into it. So you've gotten to see me talk about it. You heard about the basics. You heard about some of the more advanced stuff and then you kind of just got to see me use the app as i went and hopefully at this point you have an idea whether it's worth a free trial for you totally free trial so you can try for 31 days and see if it works but i guess my big thing would be the more notes you take the more useful rome becomes so if you only take a few notes if you take like five lines of notes every month, then Rome isn't worth it for you. <laughs> you should really use something else. But if you take a lot of notes and then you're gonna get those connections, you're gonna have these things that you can link together. You're gonna get like a personal database, a personal wiki, uh, CRM, like there's tons of things you can do with this. Then it becomes more useful. So am I continuing after this? Yes, I am. <laughs> so I am. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for other monthly subscriptions that I can cancel, that I can live without, so that I can use Roam because I really want to have these features. I really, I, I didn't even get into just the usability of it, but like the way you can do things, it's very quick. Uh, the way it does, like for example, if I'm on a bulleted list and I'm in the first um, spot on it, if I hit Enter, it knocks the that bullet down one, and then leaves the cursor on that one above because obviously I'm going to type something there. So like just little touches like that I think are really nice. I'm going to stick with it. I'm interested in apps like Obsidian, which is for the Mac. I'm interested in uh, just finding some alternatives to this maybe, but it's really clicked with me <laughs> in a way that no note-taking app has ever before. And I, it's, it's really, really, really useful for me. Um, I, I don't know if I can legitimize exactly $15 a month, but it feels like it's worth $15 a month than me, and that's really all that matters. So I'm using it. I don't know if it's the right thing for you, but like I said, you can tr start a free trial today. Um, check out a link in the description. Obviously, this video is not sponsored or anything. These are just my thoughts on it. But I wanted to share kind of my thoughts on Rome and how it was working for me. And hopefully you will know by now if it's uh, going to be something you should check out as well. That's it. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. Uh, please hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed. And I will see you here next time. Bye.